Shalom Aleichem, my name is Tony Pino, and today we're continuing in our series concerning is it law and grace, or is it law versus grace? Which is it? Today we're continuing in Romans chapter 14. Last time together we talked about the food laws, and now we're moving on to whether or not Paul got rid of Shabbat. Is every day now the same? Can we make any day holy that we choose? Let's find out. Amen. So here we are in Romans chapter 14. We're going to start with verse 5. This is the verse where people will often take us to show us that we don't have to keep Sabbath anymore because all days are alike. We don't have to keep Pesach and we don't have to do the holy days because every day is the same. Amen. So in verse 5, it begins, Paul says, one person esteems one day over another while another judges every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes that day does so to the Lord. The one who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to the Lord. And the one who abstains, abstains to the Lord, and he gives thanks to the Lord, or to God. For none of us lives for himself, none dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this reason, Messiah died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. So here in the beginning in verse 5, it talks about one person esteeming one day over another, and another person judges every day alike. Now again, as I taught you in the last video, Shaul will never violate the words of Yeshua. So we already have to see through the lens of Shaul. We have to see through his lens. He knows that Yeshua has not completed the Torah or the writings or the, all the words in the prophets. He's not fulfilled all of those words. There are several passages that Yeshua must fulfill on his second return, which is why he's returning. So Shaul will never violate the words of Yeshua, which means the Sabbath is still established. All the holy days are still Yahweh's commands. Amen. You cannot mess with the holy days which come from the mouth of Yahweh. As we see here in Exodus chapter 20, straight from the mouth of Yahweh, remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Shabbat to Yahweh your God. In it, you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servants, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. This is the outsider who is grafted into the covenant, living amongst the nation of Israel, living amongst her covenants. That's you and me who are Gentiles in Yeshua. Amen. For in six days, Yahweh made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Thus, Yahweh blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. He set it aside for the celebration of creation. One thing we do on Shabbat is we celebrate Yahweh creating the earth, creating us in those six days. It's a celebration. We also look forward to the future when we will have an eternal rest in Yeshua. Right now, we're working the kingdom. Shaul right there is working the kingdom. Our bodies need rest. You're not going to just treat every day the same, not according to Shaul, not according to Yeshua. Also remember, I took you to Acts chapter 25, where it states, when he, Shaul, arrived, the Judeans who had come down from Jerusalem stood around him, bringing against him many serious charges, which they could not prove. They could not prove the charges they were bringing against Shaul. Paul said in his defense, I have committed no offense against the Torah of the Jewish people, or against the temple, or against Caesar. You see, if Shaul was teaching the Gentiles to forsake Shabbat, that every day is the same, he's violating the Torah of the Jewish people. He proclaimed here he is not doing that, and he never did do that. And so what is going on in Romans chapter 14? Well, as earlier in the last uh, session, we talked about the halakha, the oral laws of the food laws. We also have extra biblical days that the Jews have added in celebration of things that Yahweh has done, or that they're praying for restoration of something. You have the destruction of the first temple. You have things that have happened that they have added extra fast days to, uh, to the 
to the Torah. And so they hold these extra fast days that are man-made traditions. Sometimes they were holding them equal to the Torah. Okay, they were holding them at very high esteem. And that is very optional for a Gentile, whether they want to celebrate those extra fast days or not. Okay, so when it says one person esteems one day over another, he's talking about the extra biblical days that in Jewish tradition that have been added. Okay, so one person esteems one day over another, while another judges every day alike. Okay, the Gentile not connected to those extra biblical days of fasting and all that, they're going to judge every day alike. Okay. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. If the Gentile wants to join the Jewish brethren on their extra fast days, great. Okay. The one who observes that day does so to the Lord. He is doing it to the Lord. It's some type of victory that the Lord has given the Jewish people, or it's a judgment that came on the Jewish people that he's praying for restoration, like the destruction of the temple. And so what you have is a dispute here. Maybe the Jews want the Gentiles to honor their extra biblical days, and the Gentiles don't feel the need to do it. And so they are perfectly acceptable. It's perfectly acceptable for the Gentile not to do Hanukkah, not to do Purim, not to do the extra uh, fast on the ninth of Av and, and different things like that. Those are extra biblical days. They can if they want. It would be a blessing to them if they did, but they don't have to. So we're seeing a dispute over extra biblical days. If we were to go to Zechariah chapter 8, we see evidence of that here in verse 18. In verse 18, in Zechariah chapter 8, it says, Again, the word of Yahweh Zavaot came saying, Thus says Yahweh Zavaot, the fast of the fourth, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth will become joy, gladness, and cheerful moedim. Therefore, love truth and shalom. In other words, these were some extra biblical fast days that were added. You won't find them in the Torah. The, the fast of the seventh month, if we're talking about Yom HaKippurim, that is a command in the Torah. But the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth month, the fast of the tenth month are Jewish tradition. And Yahweh's honoring that. That's no problem. He's saying it's going to turn into gladness. It's not, it's not a time of gladness right now. Things happened on those days that are a time of mourning to the Jewish people. But they, and they hold it very high to do these fasts in their communities. Gentiles are not bound to fast along with them on those days, okay? But Yahweh is honoring what they are doing, and one day he's going to turn that mourning into gladness. And so we, you know, we also have Hanukkah and Purim. We have different events that have happened throughout Jewish history that they hold very high. And so the Gentile, it's optional. So are they arguing on whether or not to keep Sabbath? No, absolutely not. Those are indisputable. Those are Yahweh's holy days. And we will always honor them as one people in Yeshua, in his kingdom. It is the extra biblical days that is being spoken of in Romans chapter 14. Nobody argues over the holy days of Yahweh. Paul would never get you to violate the words of Yeshua or the Torah. Amen. And so I hope this helps straighten out the confusion. Paul is a Torah observant Jew. So, is it law and grace, or is it law versus grace? It is law and grace. Amen. So, until we meet again, everyone, shalom.